unfamiliar but yeah I am here now hi guys and welcome back to my channel and if you are new then a big huge welcome to you as you can see I'm not in my normal setting but I am in a different setting because I am on holiday and I thought I would bring my camera along just because I want to do some filming while I'm on holiday but yeah it's really strange being in a different room on the time I'm recording this it is my third day of the holiday but by the time this is uploaded I have may have been long gone from my holiday and I would have been back home but I am going to plan to film a few videos uh, with in this setting so I could put it up into my channel for the next few weeks but I really don't know yet for certain but we're just gonna have to probably see how we go today's video I wanted to do a little bit of a relax and chill video. I don't have any notes with me at the moment for this video because I just feel that I, I don't want to tense myself too much. So this is a bit of a sit down and a relax video. And this topic is very relevant in the autistic YouTube community at the moment because I have seen two of my content creative friends who have members or who themselves are on the autistic spectrum and they've been away on holiday. So I thought that in addition to that, I thought I would sit down and talk about what it's like going on holiday, being a person on the autistic spectrum. And I have filmed a video about this years ago, but I thought I would just give it a little bit of an update. And I just wanted to talk about what has happened since I recorded that video. Going on holiday is a very different for a person who's on the autistic spectrum. And it is a little bit out of their comfort zone especially for ones who are very used to having a routine and I'm not normally a routine person because I know that I'm relaxed and I'm just really keeping myself to myself really because I'm free to do anything but the people who I have watched and who went on holidays recently some of them aren't used to having a routine at home and then coming out of their comfort zone just to do something that's just like whoa that's a big change you just don't know how they're going to react to this sort of thing I know that was in one case because one of the content creators I watch Kevin of the Chapman family he and his family and that's Anna his two daughters Lucy and Amy and Andy they went on a recent trip to Disneyland Paris and this is something that is abroad and normally when they go on holiday Andy is very used to going somewhere that's within the UK and to be honest this is the first time I've seen on Kevin's channel that Andy has been away abroad and I have watched a few of Kevin's videos on their trip to Disneyland Paris and that was really interesting because I did see how Andy actually learned to develop and react and think about when they went on holiday and I compared that to another content creator family who I know and that is the Stevenson Gretsch family and I know I get their name wrong well surname wrong so uh, I'm sorry if I got it wrong guys and in the family there are Cheryl, Ben, Sammy and Stephen and every single year and I don't know if it's twice a year for one week but every time they go on a half term break or on a big break like Easter or the summer they go to a holiday resort in Weymouth they have been doing it for a long long time oh sorry well my camera just went blurry for a second sorry guys I don't know what happened there anyway as I was saying this is something that uh, they have done before and the boys are very used to having that routine because they can actually create a routine of what they want to do so for example if they wanted to go somewhere that they really liked they can go to that on that day and they just feel relaxed and they would have a good time and when I compare to the Chapman family's trip 
trip to Disneyland Paris and the Stephenson Gretsch's family to Weymouth, I found that there was a lot of difference between those two in terms of going holiday abroad and on holiday in the UK. And that got me really thinking about what a holiday can be like. Because for me, I actually went on a few holidays that were abroad, but most of the holidays I have spent were here in the UK. Where I am now at the moment, I am in the middle of the countryside, in the middle of nowhere in Dorset. And we come down to Dorset once a year because we have family. By that I mean me and my family. We have other family members who are living down in Dorset. So when we can, we try to get down to see them once a year because we don't get to see them much. And this is the only chance and places that we can. And it is a little bit it's sad at times that they're not close to us but it's also wonderful to see them but it also gives us an opportunity just to do things and most of the things that we do are dog walking because of my two dogs go on to the beach go into countryside have meals in different pubs and restaurants and in some cases just going shopping in the local shop and me and my parents are still trying to get around this area because we keep getting lost a few times but we're doing all right really despite going all the wrong directions but hey ho never mind i have been going down to dorset with my family for 12 to 13 years which is a really really long time but it's something that we are all familiar with but the things that i'm not familiar with are the ones that really really not tested me but really expanded on a lot of things for me because i got some opportunities just to do a few things that I wouldn't normally do and a few things for example Walt Disney World twice I've been there with my friend and there was so much to do and there were some bits that I thought I would never ever do but I really had such a wonderful time and going to Walt Disney World twice taught me a few new things not just as a person on the spectrum but as a Disney enthusiast as well I can't even pronounce enthusiast there we go enthusiast there are loads of things at Disney World that never actually happened at home because I am a, such a different person. I would hardly go to any theme parks within the UK but when I am at Walt Disney World I would happily go on nearly every single ride that I do except for the really scary ones <laughs> because I'm never going to be doing Space Mountain or Mount Everest. If someone puts me on there, mm -mm, not going up there end of story. Walt Disney World, when I first went there, was my very first abroad holiday without my parents and this was something that I went for the first time with my friend and we went there just after I graduated and I have included a playlist of both of my Disney World trips so I will leave them in the card around the video and yeah th this was a really big step because me and my friend have always wanted to go to Walt Disney World for such a long time and for me going abroad with my parents and the only places where I have been abroad to are Canada and France and what else I think it was these two oh no actually no, Scotland doesn't count because it's in the UK but we have flown to Scotland once on the aeroplane so I don't know if that counts but probably not. Canada I don't really remember going to but with lots I remember going to because I have been away from my parents but I have been away in a community group that I know and my parents have been in contact throughout the whole time so that that was really fine but for me to go on my own with one other person oh boy that was a really big step but I really enjoyed every moment of it and I wish I wish I wish I would go back again either with my friend or on my own I really wanted to go on a few holidays on my own but because of my autism and most disappointingly my epilepsy I would have no chance of going on holiday on my own and I know a few people who have been on holiday holiday on their own and it was really good fun just to actually try but because of the 
of epilepsy and the lack of travel training, it was going to be impossible. And I don't know if it will be possible or not, but I think for someone who is a woman and who's on the autistic spectrum and epileptic, I'm not sure if I will ever have the chance to be independent because there are some places that can be dangerous for women. So we're just gonna have to see how I go and it may never happen. But after this holiday, the next holiday I'm going to be going to is only for one night, but it's something that again is a massive, massive big step because I'm going on holiday for the very first time with Jack and let me tell you, I am really excited, but I'm really nervous at the same time. But we have never been on a holiday on our own together before. And this is something that we really, re really don't know what to expect on what's going to happen. I don't really know what's going to happen. But all I can say is that I hope that there is a lot of positive high hopes there. Because we don't really want a holiday to end on a flat note. And that will be... Uh, that would be a disaster <laughs> if it did, but fingers crossed and touch wood that everything will be all right. And I have positive high hopes for it. And that's all the holidays that I've got so far. But there is one holiday that I want to go to, but my family especially want to go to, and I need to hurry up on this because they really want to go. And they've been waiting to go for two years. We have sort of decided that we should try to go to Versailles and this we've been talking about for nearly two years and some maybe three but this is something that my family have always wanted to do and it's up to me just to do preparations and booking which I haven't done yet but I need to do that because if I don't do that then it might be a bit too late but uh, we'll just see. I know I've got to do these things, but I just keep forgetting. Urgh. But yeah, come on, says you really need a like a diary or something. <laughs> That's just me talking ridiculously to myself. Being on holiday is something that is a very, very big experience that you can learn either on your own or with other people. It can be a connection to your loved ones or it can change you as a person or it can change your interests of activities and hobbies or it could be something else. You, you, you just don't know until you get there. But the, the thing about it is that when you are on the autistic spectrum, it can be a little bit tricky, especially when it comes to the routine side. So what I always do before I go away on holiday is I always think of a few tips, which I will pass on to you guys now. And this could be for anyone. And my tips that I want to share are always bring a few things that are valuable and always keep them safe. This is a really tricky one when it comes to abroad, but in a hotel room, you should have a safe which keeps all of your belongings safe in your hotel room. And I know with Walt Disney World and when I went to Paris with my parents, we had a safe that kept everything safe, but we had a few things, oh yeah, <laughs> if you can hear a, a little bit of noise there, that's the rain, the rain's been pouring heavily for the past few days, so yeah, we're not having much luck with the weather at the moment while we're on a holiday, anyway, anyway, I'm actually slowing things down, <laughs> anyway, as I was saying before, in a the safe you should have a safe in your hotel room but if that's not possible you always have to keep it with you in a handbag but the most highly recommended thing to carry your money or your phone around is a bum bag i don't really use a bum bag a lot in the uk but a bum bag abroad is a godsend i used it all the time when i was at walt disney world and it was a lifesaver, it generally was, because not only you have less to carry, but also you can actually keep an eye on your stuff so it won't get stolen. Number two, always keep in contact with your parents or your carers. This is a really big one for me because it is frustrating and it is annoying, but my parents are really keen to know how I'm getting on. So every time I went on holiday with my 
friend who we went to Walt Disney World with, I always contacted my parents first thing in the morning and the last thing at night, whatever time zone we were in. But the biggest time zone that was really interesting, and this was a really big gap, when I went to Walt Disney World, every time I woke up, which was around 7am, it would be 3pm in the UK. And that was the biggest time gap. And it was have a little bit of time just to contact mum and dad and just to see how we're getting on and just to make sure everything is fine but it was really crucial when I went to Walt Disney World the second time because I ended up being so 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 ill and I was going to mention it in my Walt Disney World vlogs but unfortunately I never got around to do that because I forgot but I will just explain a little bit of that. When I went on my holiday and I think it was in the middle of the week I actually had a little bit of nausea and diarrhea and I would just go to the toilet every every about five to ten minutes and I'll just keep going to the toilet each and every single time I couldn't eat any food because every time I chewed something or took my epilepsy medication I would still throw up which is not that good and um, it got so so bad that I had to go to the medical center and it was really lucky that I did because I ended up being sick in the reception so I had to wait in the doctor's room straight away which it was kind of like a good thing because it was really lucky and that meant that I could be treated more easily so I, I thought to myself thank god I don't have to wait for a long long time and when they looked at me they said that it could have been some sort of bug that's going around because in Walt Disney World they have a virus that goes around that can make people feel a bit ill but some people when I talked about it later some people thought it was food poisoning because I had a lot of food there but I don't know if there was something that I had contained something that didn't really agree with me in my stomach or there were, or something was undercooked or something like that I really really don't know but I, I guess I'll never know really to be honest but my friend bless her she kept my parents up to date on how everything was getting on and she contacted them the first thing in the morning but she also contacted them after I came out to the medical centre just to say how I'm getting on, what was happening and when we had a little bit of a chat to them afterwards my mum who is a nurse she would give my friend advice on what to do if I should end up feeling sick or having diarrhoea again and she suggested a lot of really really interesting things and also she really told me not to eat as much and I was so gutted because I wanted to eat all the food I could get at Walt Disney World but that was not meant to be and also I couldn't go on the slinky dog ride because I wasn't well enough to actually go and again this made me feel really really sad and I wish I could have done slinky dog but I guess it wasn't meant to be really but that, that was a really crucial point because I never ever ever since I had my first possible epileptic fit I've never actually been ill on holiday let alone abroad but even though the treatment cost me $300 it was for the best that I would get myself some treatment because we didn't really know what to do and also we just didn't know what was going to happen my third tip is to try and have a communication and this is a really big thing for me when I'm going on the holiday with Jack because Jack knows I have epilepsy but we really haven't had like a proper talk on anything when it comes to knowing what to do if I have a seizure. We did have a talk about what we should do but we never really had a practice on what he should do if I had a seizure. But my seizures are well controlled but if 
anything happens, it's very, very important to know that me and him should have a talk about on what we should do. And the first thing that I probably want to try, and Jack is on board with this as well, the first thing we may want to try is by going on a first aid course. Now I don't know if it's going to happen before or after we go on, on a holiday, but if there is anyone who has seizures and they have a partner who has little medical experience on seizures and epilepsy or seizures that are non-epilepsy related it's very important to know that they should know what is happening and that's why communication is very very important in this situation and I know that I will have to have a sit down and have a more of a chat with Jack at this point but we're, we're just gonna have to see how we actually go and who knows what will happen but I hope that fingers crossed and touch wood once again that nothing bad will happen my fourth tip is to to carry as many medical records as possible but this is not for UK related purposes but it is for abroad because if you are traveling abroad you really need to bring some medical documents just in case of anything and for them you have to include your like record of your diagnoses so for me I always have to bring a letters to prove that I have autism and epilepsy but I also have to bring my national insurance card and also I have to bring any forms of medication I have so if anything went wrong the doctors will know what I would take when I am back home in the UK or maybe that they just use it as like a medical record and finally number five is just to have fun and not worry too much but if you are planning to go to somewhere and if you want to come up with a routine that would include everybody the best thing to do is to come up with a spreadsheet now this is something that me and my friend had done before we went to Walt Disney World and my friend works as a business administrator so she works on Excel spreadsheets a lot so what we did from there is that we looked at the Walt Disney website and we had a look on what was there, what we should book in terms of booking things for a magic band. So we would book things like fries or restaurants and all of that jazz. And we would write them on spreadsheets and just keep a record of them. And when we got to Walt Disney World, we took our spreadsheets with us and we gave them a few ticks when we have done them or if we wanted to do something different we could always swap them and for me I don't really mind a few changes because I'm so used to not being in a routine but with some people it can be different but a lot of people on the autistic spectrum are different and I guess that's about it really that's all I can really say I've realized that I've been talking about oh frubs I've nearly talked about for a 40 minutes that's gonna be the longest video I've ever done wow that is really amazing that's it milestone so yeah I think I definitely have a lot to edit when I am editing this before I upload this so ah, that that's a huge achievement I'm really proud of myself but well, hopefully you guys won't be too bored and I'm sorry if I didn't make you bored but yeah, I, I promise I'll make a shorter video next time. So yeah, until then, I will leave it right here. And before I go, I will leave you guys with a question. What has been your favourite holiday? And it can be in the UK or abroad. And I know I said a question, but this is the second question. What tip would you recommend to an individual or a family with an individual on the autistic spectrum? Again, let me know in the comment section down below and let's get talking about it. I would really love to hear your thoughts and opinions on this. And there may be some tips that I don't even know about and it will be really great just to see which ones that will come up and about. So yeah, until then guys, I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are in the world and I will be back with another video in the cottage so don't expect for me to go anywhere anytime soon 
<laughs> so until then guys have a wonderful day and always remember to keep on dreaming and to never stop believing i'll see you very soon bye bye